Well, hello everyone. Welcome to episode number four of the program we call Illumination, uh, emanating from Sunset Lodge number 369 right here in in Santa Monica, California. I almost said sunny S Southern California. Looks like we're going to have rain once again. So since we've been having this podcast, uh, we've, we've got a lot of rain coming in. So I, I can't talk about sunny Southern, Southern California that much. But, you know, we're here to do many things. We're here to uh, shine the light on the members of our lodge, especially the newer ones, uh, like Brother Davis last week, a brand new Master Mason. And he became our organist tonight. Uh, for people who don't know very much about it, uh, organist is a position, an officer of the lodge. And not necessarily we don't have an organ, we have a piano, but it's still called the organist. And it's great to have him a part of our lodge when it comes to that. A big thank you to Brother Michael. He's in the hot seat once again. And he and I are going to be talking about something that I think is really important, and that is some of the symbolism of Freemasonry. And Brother Michael, it's great to have you a part of this once again. Well, it's really, really good to be here, Les, and I'm super happy to help out with the show. And um, I hope you'll forgive me. It's been a while since I've gone over some of the symbolism stuff, but I, I will search the the recesses of my mind for whatever little bit of information I can find, and we'll go from there. So fire away. Whatever I can I can answer for you, I, I'll give it my best shot. Okay, real good. And you've always been a master at this anyway. Uh, you, you, you in particular, have really shown a lot of interest in the symbolism of Freemasonry. What got you interested in that? I know when you, when you first became a Mason, you came in for certain reasons. But what grabbed your eye about the symbolism most of all? Well, I mean, I think the symbolism in Freemasonry, it, there's just something about it. It's, it's incredibly esoteric. And of course, as we mentioned in the last week's show with Ray, my wife and I have, have been involved reading and working with tarot cards and esoteric symbolism for a long time. So, and, and certainly I think the symbolism in the Lodge, a lot of it harkens back to that. We see a lot of reference to Kabbalah and Hermeticism and so forth. And, and these symbols are, are go way back in antiquity, you know, as we know, and, and the symbolism associated with it. But I think because of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, we're so comfortable working with the symbolic language. Um, and, and I think that there's a lot of wisdom in that with Freemasonry because I think that the symbols themselves are living things. I, I think once you write something down in words, it becomes frozen and dead. And I think symbols always are evolving and you'll always find something new in it that you didn't quite see before. And, and that's exciting. And, and even after years and years, sometimes you'll, you'll see a new el element to a symbol that you hadn't quite thought of before or see it in a slightly different light. Whereas I said, I, I think that dogmatic text are, are very very frozen you know, for lack of a better word i can understand in fact that's of all things what i love most about the second degree there's so much there and i mentioned this last week also that how much i love the second degree but the symbolism within that degree is so rich and i think that's where i really caught on to what symbolism was was when i was studying that and um, I had my second degree, I experienced it, and then got even more out of it by just sitting back and watching someone else receive their degree. But as being a senior deacon, there's so much there, and I, that's, that's where I caught on to it most of all also. Yeah, I think the senior deacon's lecture obviously um, has a lot of the symbolism in it. So I, I think that... Um, and, but it really all does. And, and sadly, in masonry, I, I think we've gone through that dumbing down a little bit. Right. And I think that that's kind of sad that we've done that. And so I know that the full forms of the lectures often contain much more of the symbolism than um, the candidate doesn't necessarily receive anymore. And we kind of hope that they'll study and, and look at the monitor and so forth, which is a little textbook that has the parts of the ritual that have been sort of, you know, cut out for brevity. Um, but I'm not convinced brevity is a good thing, and I, I think there's something about you know having that symbolism presented in the lodge as part of the ritual. That that I, it's a shame that it's, in my opinion, that it's not there quite as much. So. What what can we do to reverse that? What what can Ooh. we do as our lodge? You know, we can't do anything about other lodges, of course. But what can we here at Sunset Lodge do to to turn change that and to make go, uh, take us in a different direction? Well, I, I guess that's a good question, isn't it? Um, what can we do about that? There's, there's probably only so much that you can do. I, I think that the, um, 
you know, I understand kind of the brevity and where the dumbing down occurred. I, I think that um, back in the 1950s with, you know, after the war years, masonry, I, I've often said, was too successful for its own good. Uh, and people were joining in such numbers that I think a lot of it was we need to get through this stuff faster. And so they, they you know, cut it down and cut it down and cut it down. And, and I think that that was just a necessity at the time. But, um, but you know, I, I think that now we, we need to rethink some of that. And But I, I think that the main thing is now you have to convince the Grand Lodge to rethink some of that. And right. I don't know if they are prepared to do that at this particular point. So. Little by little, bit by bit. By the way, I want to let everybody know, if you hear some um, noise in the background there with Brother Michael, uh, we have just finished our stated meeting, or those who are not aware of it, basically is our business meeting, wouldn't you say, uh, Brother Mike? Yeah, it, it's basically our business meeting on the first of the month. If you guys are in the Santa Monica area and you want to drop by and yes. visit us for dinner at 6.30 on Tuesdays, the first Tuesday of the month, we'd love to have you, and the food is is not too bad, and uh, my mother said anytime you can get a free meal, take it. So, you know, we'll definitely do that um, and meet some of the brethren. But it's always a good time, and, and we definitely um, enjoy taking care of the business of the lodge and seeing it, you know, flourish and grow going forward. So, for sure. Come on by. And, you know, I, uh, one of the things I love about masonry is its simplicity, but I think the symbolism has such richness to it, and I think whenever people think of, first think of masonry, if you talk to them about masonry, the first symbol they come up with is the square and compass and the letter G. Can you give us a little bit of insight into that? I know I'm kind of hitting you at the last second on this, but you, you've got such great knowledge on this, Brother Mike. I wanted to hear your insight into well, that. Well, I mean, that's obviously the principal symbol of Freemasonry is the compass and square. And you'll see it on all the rings and buildings and so forth. Um, there are a couple of little tricks to it that I probably shouldn't talk about since I think they are probably a little more forbidden. Right. But the, um, I've often said that the worst person to give you a lecture on Freemasonry is a Freemason because we've taken oaths of secrecy and there's things we can't talk about. So, right. But, you know, that stuff's out there. And if you guys want to find it, you can dig around and yeah. I'm sure find books that have been written on it. And and that's between them and their lodge, <laughs> but, right. but I can't. Um, but the symbol itself, and, and I think that there's, uh, the, the way it was explained to me and by someone who's very into symbolism was that it forms two triangles or two arrows, one pointing down, one pointing up. And, and the arrow that's pointing up, the compass lays over top of the square. And the uh, idea is that it's pointing towards the head and the downward pointing area toward the genitalia. And it's the idea that the, the reasoning mind is supposed to be in charge of the base instincts, our, our passions, our angers, you know, our, our out of control kind of emotional body, uh, our lusty body, if you will, um, is supposed to be governed by the mind. And, and I, I think that that's a really great metaphor for that. And I, I remember that um, Pierre Trudeau is Prime Minister of Canada when I was growing up there, and he's always been the politician I've compared all other politicians against, and most have not measured up, frankly. Um, but when he was young, he took a motto which was reason over passion, which I think is the compass and square again, reason over passion. And I always liked that he, it wasn't reason instead of passion, that we still have our passions, and right. we're always going to have our passions, but we, we have to control them. And I often thought, what a wonderful world it would be is if everybody you know, was in control of their passions with their rational mind and, and did what was sensible and rational rather than just reacting emotionally to everything. And, and not that you displace or don't have emotion, just that you're not supposed to let it run you. And I think that that's really the reminder that goes with that symbol. That is much, very, very important. I remember seeing as a little child uh, outside about a block away from uh, my grandmother's house, uh, my, on my mom's side, Grandma and Grandpa Schmadl from Germany. There was a square and compass with the letter G on this building, and I had always tried to figure out what that was. And just learned a little bit more there. What is your favorite symbolism that you can talk about in Freemasonry, Brother Mike? Ooh, um, let's see. What would be my favorite symbol? Uh, well, I, I think compass and square really is my favorite symbol in many respects. Is, uh, probably with most Masons, that would be the case. Um, you know, I, I think that the, the level, I've, I've always been a fan of the idea of equality that we all sort of at the end meet on the level. Um, and that, you know, I've never been a fan of hierarchy, and I think that masonry doesn't have really that, you know, emphasis on hierarchy the way that some systems and, and some organizations do, and I've often thought that was wise. Um, so I think that maybe that one to a degree is important. Uh, the pillars are often important to me, the two pillars, Boaz and Jochen. 
uh, heaven and earth. And, and again, you know, the idea of, we hear that in everywhere in, in the Lord's Prayer as it is on earth, and you know, let it be in heaven or as in heaven on earth. Um, we hear it in Hermeticism, as above, so below. Uh, and so, and there are other little places in the Masonic ritual where that's hidden, that if you guys take your degrees after you have your first degree, I'll be happy to explain to you where that's hidden in the first degree. Oh, yeah. um, so those things are, are, I think, important. The other si symbols that I think are very important are in the third degree. Um, and in the third degree, especially, is where we get the emphasis on separation of powers and, and political power in church and state. Um, and the, the, as you know, there's a central hero in the third degree who meets with a tragic circumstance, and, and there are three tools that are used in the degree and three, three implements. And one of them um, represents ecclesiastical rule, the, the canon. Uh, one of them represents political, and the other one represents ignorance. And, and I think every time you have an illiterate, uh, uneducated population ruled by a combination of church and state, people suffer. And I think that this was an observation coming out of the Dark Ages when Masonry was forming, that these are the forces coming together that tended to create suffering, and that these three forces always have to be kept separate in some way, that we, we can have religious and political power as long as we have an educated population, <laughs> and that we'll keep right. it in check. Um, and, but when the three come together, I think, is when people really, you know, it, it becomes violent and people are, are harmed. And so I think our, our forefathers were very wise in making that um, that a big part of the degrees and and obviously that's a big part of what shaped our country because sure. that's that's clearly been important to, to America very good and uh, by the way they're having another meeting outside so if you hear little noises and people having a good old time that's what that is but you know I'm sure that'll be all right I just want to remind everybody you are watching slash listening to the program called illumination Coming from Sunset Lodge number 369 right here in Santa Monica, California. And as always, I like to invite you, if you're watching, if there's something you want to find out more about in Freemasonry, write us in the email address that will be scrolling down here at some time. And I'm more than happy to receive words from you and, and hear what you think along the way. And uh, Brother Mike, we, uh, where is that one person that always seems to show up? Uh, where, where do they watch from? Oh, I was saying that, that um, and of course, we only are a couple episodes into the show, so sure. we don't, uh, don't have a huge following yet. Right. Um, we're, we're just happy when the tech stuff works right at this point. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. again, you know, we'll, we'll work on building our audience. But I was looking at our analytics, and for some reason, Lush, you are incredibly popular in the Netherlands. There's somebody that's a huge fan of yours that's Thank watched you. every show that we've done from the Netherlands. So Thank I guess you. our little show is, is getting out there at least slowly, but enthusiastically to at least one person. Hello, so. friend. We're, whoever you are, hello. We see you. So we want to thank you for that. And yes, we are. We're, we're just starting out. This is brand new, and I'm getting, I've never done a little podcast, video podcast like this before. So I'm kind of finding my way through it and trying to learn along the way. And uh, along the way, I'm also learning a lot about masonry, too, which is really good. And uh, we are, we're just doing our best with this. Now, what you were speaking of, of the symbolism. What is there anything you can talk to about the symbolism between the worshipful master, the senior, and junior wardens, and, and how they're laid out in a lodge? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I think that um, the number three obviously plays a large part in Freemasonry. We hear it over and over and over. Um, and I, I don't know if I would say that there's, I'm aware of that particular relationship between those, other than, again, you know, they, they are still sort of connected with those three, three forces to a degree in a positive way. But there is an element of it that I, I think is very interesting, and um, it's when they recite their particular duties. Um, and, and I think that there are states of consciousness or, or karmic forces. You know, the, the junior warden, when it's to call the craft from labor to refreshment and refreshment to labor again, is talking about death and birth and resurrection, the idea of, uh, of you know, I, I, I'm born, I die, I reincarnate, I'm reborn. And so he's discussing that in a symbolic sense. Um, and uh, so he's kind of the lord of rebirth. Um, the senior warden, when he talks about to pay the craft their wages if any be due, he's talking about karma. So he's the lord of karma. Uh, and so basically, um, that's his role, is to remind us uh, of our karmic 
destiny and that, that we're trying to create a good karma in a sense that, and, and I think in the Western world, unfortunately, most people don't even understand karma and what it means. They think that we're all being affected by our karma, which isn't necessarily true in that yeah. sense, that it, it may be one small element of what we're experiencing. But it's to recognize that there is a cause and effect. So going forward, try and create that good energy, try and create something positive. So it's not really so much to explain why things are happening as much as it is to understand the importance of trying to, to create that positive energy going forward. Um, but we use it as a way of blaming others for their suffering and this is your karma coming back on you and all that stuff. And I, I wish people wouldn't do that. That's not really the point of it. Mm -hmm. And then the Worshipful Master, again, you know, to, to give the craft their instructions is consciousness. You know, he's the idea of the elevation of the conscious mind. and. And so I think that those are the three great philosophical principles of enlightenment when it comes right down to it in many respects. And, and so it's just another example of how something on the surface can look so superficial in masonry, and yet underneath of that are these profound ancient wisdoms and teachings. So and, and, you know, what's really interesting, too, is, is you're just scratching the top of it. There's the superficial part, which is really wonderful. And then there's what you're talking about, and you're just beginning to crack the surface of it by what you're talking about, in my humble opinion, along the way. I saw in the monitor a uh, part that's written out, so uh, I feel I can talk about it. If I can't, you know how to edit me out, don't you, Brother Mike? Well, I hate to break it to you, Les, but we do a live show, and I don't edit anything. So if you do something <laughs> dumb, the Grand Master is going to want to have a chat with you, probably, oh, okay. just so uh, you know. Okay, okay. So I'll talk about this, and it says... One of the favorite parts of the second degree is whenever the senior deacon says, uh, a point is the beginning of all geometrical matter. And once again, I saw that written out in English and not in the script, so I thought that was okay to talk about. That is the most profound line that I've heard in a very, very long time. Where do you find that point? Where is the point where all geometrical matter begins? And I think that's the magic of things. Um, you're talking about the beginning, uh, the touch of God in, mm -hmm. into the world and in many other ways. Do you have anything on that, Brother Mike? Well, yeah, I, I think that, that that's important. I, I think that the idea of, um, you know, as you said, the, the beginning, uh, the gnosis, you know, that, that, that really, that inspiration is really the beginning. And the thing that's interesting about a mathematical point is they exist, but good luck finding one. Right. Um, because they, they literally would be invisible uh, since they have no length or breadth or mass. Um, but I, I think that it, it's, in a sense, the, the, the point is that beginning of pure inspiration, you know, is the way I would sort of like to look at it. And, and, and of course, you know, we have the other point, in a sense, is that the point within a circle is the, a, a symbol in the uh, first degree. Um, and that is you. I, I mean, everything comes from you. Everything is about you in that sense. Um, and, and one of the things I love about Freemasonry is that I think that as a teaching and as a, as a philosophical tool, it has this belief that the teacher itself is irrelevant. And I've often really liked that idea that the teacher itself is not relevant um, in the sense that if a person wants to learn, they're going to learn. And we don't. We can stimulate them with some curious-looking objects that will inspire their creativity, and maybe stimulate their imagination and curiosity, and that may be enough to get them kick-started into researching and reading and learning. But if they don't have the desire to learn, if they just really are not interested, then there's just no point in us preaching to them. They're not going to really be ready to receive. And, and so I, I think when the, it sort of comes back into that idea of the, when the teacher is ready, the student will appear and right. vice versa. But in this case, and it may be a step further, the teacher, teacher doesn't even really matter if, if you're going to. And, and I think that that plays into the idea, too, with masonry, that um, our goal is not rehabilitation. We're not here to take someone who's going in the wrong direction and try and, and argue with them and turn their life around and so forth. There are wonderful organizations that do that. Right. But, but we see the idea of creating good in the world by taking someone who's already going in the right direction and trying to empower and enable them and support them to do the most good that they can do, and, and in that way. And I think that that comes down to physics again, you know, that idea of the body in motion wanting to stay in motion and, and so forth. So to take an object going in the right direction and give it a push probably does more good in the world than the effort it will take to turn someone around and rehabilitate them. And as I said, there are other fine organizations that are all about the rehabilitation, right. but that's not our mission. Well, I, I think personally what I've seen of talking to people along the way is I think there's a misunderstanding about the math and sciences used um, during the time of, of the Masons themselves building King Solomon's Temple. And the great skill they had to do what they did and to, to, to cut the stone away from the site, 
and be able to bring it in and it fits together perfectly is something that's beyond anything. And I just want to remind everyone, once again, this is the program Illumination. And my name is Les. I'm the host of the show. And I'm emanating from the library of Sunset Lodge number 369 right here in Santa Monica, California. If you live in the area or if you plan on being around here, please feel free and come by and visit us. We're here most Tuesday nights. And like most Masonic organizations I know about, we don't have a meeting without food. And so we eat from 6.30 to 7.30, and then we have whatever meeting we have afterwards. Now, to be able to come and eat with us, you don't have to be a Mason. You can just come in if you want to find out more about what's going on and just chat with somebody. We're, we're more than willing to sit down and talk to you. And my guest is my producer, and the man in the hot seat is Brother Michael. And Brother Mike, uh, I've got a one that's really close to my heart, and that's the senior deacon. Can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit about the symbolism of the senior deacon? Uh, you don't want much. <laughs> Where do you start? Really? Um, and obviously, it's an incredibly important job. And in many ways, um, the proxy of the master in, in many respects, and, and not so much a servant and employee, but you know, you know, the Robin to the master's Batman, so to speak. Um, and I, I think all the officers, th there's obviously a symbolism. We look at the jewels and so forth, but I think that that's a, a whole show in and of itself. So I don't know how far we could get into that. Um, you know, again, when we look at, I've often thought when we look at the officers picking up their jewels at the beginning of Lodge that you have ten objects circling the, the altar, which is our solar system, you know, the ten bodies in orbit around the sun. And so even, even there we see little things that are hidden. Yeah. Um, you know, again, if you have the chance to visit a Masonic Lodge, and one of the things I'll encourage you guys, if, you, if you're out there, regardless of what country or state or whatnot you're in, um, most Masonic Lodges these days, in December or January, when they have their installation of officers, um, it's normally an, a ceremony that is open to the public, and you'll hear all of the symbolism, all of the philosophy in that. It's an incredibly Masonic event, at least in California. I, I'm not going to speak for every state and country, but in California it certainly is. And you'd be more than welcome. And I think it gives you a real feel for what Freemasonry is. It gives you a real feel for some of the symbolism. Um, and so I highly encourage you guys to reach out to any lodges you have locally. And if you're uh, around installation season, find out when their installation is. And if you have the opportunity to attend, I, I think it's an amazingly good opportunity that you really shouldn't let pass if you want to understand Freemasonry. That's what it's about. And I've seen, I've noticed more and more, I, the two places I visited, are here in California, uh, more specifically here in Santa Monica, and out in the, in the lodge where I received my first degree, out in Texas. And it's a good old-fashioned uh, Masonic lodge way out in the country, about an, oh, I'd say about 45-minute drive out northwest of Houston. Wonderful lodge. And uh, I saw even more when I was able to see a third degree done out in the country. There is, uh, there is some property and some, we went back into the back area and there's a little clean spot and there was actually an outdoor third degree, which was absolutely awesome to, to be a part of. Now we're getting close to the end. What final word of symbolism do you have for us, Brother Michael? You're a man of knowledge and I, there's not too many people I know of that, that have the knowledge of masonry you have in your head. What, what final words do you have for us? Um, well, one of the words of wisdom I have in particular for you, Les, is that that noise you hear in the background is it is pouring rain outside at the moment. Uh -oh. So I hope you brought your umbrella. If not, I would highly suggest lift tonight. And I know we're in sunny California, but not <laughs> tonight, apparently, because it, it's just buckets of rain coming down at the moment. So I'm sure you guys can hear it in the background on the on the audio. Um, you know, I, it, I mean, it's it's an allegory. It's, it's symbolism, Freemasonry. It's profound. It goes back, you know, to antiquity. Uh, there are some people that claim it goes back to the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, to the, the ancient mystery schools. Um, it, it's an incredible study. You can find definitely a lot of works out there written on it. Um, I would encourage people, if you're going to look up the symbolism and some of the, the stuff about Freemasonry, be careful of the conspiracy theory, theory stuff because usually it's a perverted, you know, it is what it is. Right. Um, now, having said that, I have a couple of books home by the conspiracy theory people, and I, I love them. And the reason I love them is that they, they do such a good job researching to try and dig up every little thing that they can point to, that they're incredibly good reference books. They <laughs> really so. are, you know. Oh, thunder. 
wow. it's thundering out. So wow, it's a it's a. I hope the the electricity doesn't go out. We live in California, and oh it doesn't yeah. always like rain. Um, but if it does, we'll figure out how to edit the end of the show on and go from there. But but as I was saying, it, it's a uh, it's a fascinating study. Um, there are some great books on the subject. Um, you know, dig some of them up and read them and, and go through it. Uh, Mackey and his Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, if you're really interested in the symbolism, and he breaks a lot of it down. Um, even then, I, I still think that's his view of it, and I, I think that each person has their own take. And, and I think that in, in many cases, don't overlook the importance of what you see in it, because I, I think that what you see is valuable in it, and I think that that's your own unique perspective on the symbolism and, and what it means for you specifically and so i think that that's also very important wow it's getting heavy out there it's going to be gnarly i want to i want to have to play this for my stepmom there's a yeah. little running joke we've got about that and uh, i don't think this, this is the time or place for it but one day i'll tell you that joke and uh, if she's if she's watching this right now she's laughing she's having a good time with that well brother michael it sounds really good this seems like but you know i think the thing that caught my eye about it is about the symbolism, and and there are teachings about it, and I've I've learned a lot from people who have taught for, uh, about masonry. My goodness! Wow, it's I, it's it's a serious storm out there at I've, the moment. So. I am not used to hearing that down here. Please. We have uh, about three minutes to go to the end of our broadcast, so let's pray the power stays on for three more minutes. I that's think all it we will. Can do. Yeah, that's and all we can ask there. for. But you know, I there are I've, I've learned from some great people who have some great lessons. But the most important lessons I've learned are, are what I get from the symbols at the moment. And I've heard over and over again, the more you're, you're, you, you go over something, it comes, as you change, the meaning of the symbol changes also. And I think that's so very important. And I've seen that with myself, with my, my senior deacon work and the, the stuff that I do during the second degree it becomes more, more and more real to me each time I do it, and I, I, you, I sound like a broken record. I know when it talk when I talk about this, but it's so very important. The symbols themselves are very deep, and they're very light also, and whatever it is. So don't don't let you know when it gets down to the bare bones. Don't let anybody tell you what something means to you. And well, I, I, I think see that. Am I right, Brother Yeah, Mike? I think that's really true. And, and as I said, I, that's coming back to what I said at the beginning of the show. Just when you think you figured it all out, the symbols reveal another aspect for you. And we find that with the tarot. You know, we, my wife and I have been working with it now for 23 years. And between the two of us, we feel we've probably done between 40 and 50,000 readings for people without exaggerating. Um, and yet, to this day, every once in a while, I'll see an element in one of the cards that I thought I haven't quite seen it that way before. And you know, the, the tower card that my wife just said, you know, her new favorite word for it is the event horizon. I'd never thought of it that way before, and, and what a great way to describe it. So, uh, again, you know, and masonry is that way. There's always that revelation, that new aspect to it that you'll see, and that new awareness that you'll get. And just when you think you have it all figured out, it reveals another level. And, I and, love and that's that. a part of it, too, for sure. And that's one of the things I love. Thunder and lightning in Southern California, right this day down. And yes. I, I'm not used to hearing thunder like that here. So, Brother Michael, thank you so much for your help today. And, you you know, there's I say this all the time uh, to your back and to your face, that there's not too many people that I know of that have the knowledge you do in your head. And there's very, very few people that have it in the heart like you do. And I appreciate you being my guest and most of all being the producer and the guy in the hot seat. And thank you for those of you who are watching and or listening to the program. Feel free to get in touch with us if there's anything you want to find out about. Until next week, you have a great one. Take care.